vlog time this month i've been to a few events that i wanted to share with you so it's gonna be a short resume uh, of each event and you're gonna tell me in the comments which you think is the best one or the one you would have loved to attend because those events are not just events uh, to get massively drunk <laughs> These events are for new launches and I've got actually amazing one. I'm really proud to talk about them because there's some level, high level. Let's go. Okie dokie. First of all, we are going to Kayali's event with the launch of Yum Pistachio. And this is the outfit that I chose today, a fluffy dress, white trainers, and yeah, <laughs> what else to say? So the hotel we're going to was absolutely gorgeous and perfectly matched the fragrance actually. Um, so there was few different rooms. The first room, you'll be able to chat with everyone, uh, try the fragrances of the range again and again. So it's a little bit of a warm up and there was a little bit of food and some coffee. After that, we were directed to a second room where I was really embarrassed to see next to me the perfumer Olivier Cresp. Yes, this absolute legend was here and I asked him what he was doing here. Amazing! I was nervous, okay? I've got social anxiety, so he probably think I'm weird now. <laughs> and the absolutely amazing Mona Katan just arrived to present us the fragrance as well. So I think she's really an inspiring woman. So I was really excited to meet her. We were also blind testing the ingredient, which was really fun to do. And then after followed by the masterclass. <laughs> That part, which was uh, really, uh, really hard, and then you have, as, a, as we were mentioning, like a second skin in dry down. You have some musk and beautiful vanilla from the Madagascar as well. You see, it's unique. It doesn't smell like the market. We didn't do any market test because we don't need market test, but we don't want to, to, to wash the. The fragrance. First sniff on the fragrance, I find it really good. I'm not gonna lie, it's very fresh, but at the same time, super gourmand. So yummy. Um, Kiali is really a celebration of my Middle Eastern heritage and I love her fragrances, which started a very long time ago. Ever since I was a child, I remember falling in love with the sense of smell. So I've been collecting fragrances since I was 14 years old. I really do want to help teach people about fragrances, about layering, um, and you guys are doing a lot of that too. You guys are educators here, you're in the community, so I'm speaking to the right people. <laughs> I hope I am teaching people something. Maybe not. Mm. <laughs> um, and I asked them, I was like, do you think Olivia and Crest would be willing to work on my, my fragrance because he's such a legend, he's only works with like the biggest brands ever, he's created blockbusters, and um, he was so down to earth and his and we were so happy to work on the brief together and we started working on many different submissions. We evolved the fragrances to, to celebrate the such gelato and it is my favorite food in the world. If I was like leaving the planet tomorrow, I would tell you to give me a tub of it and that would be it. <laughs> and for me it's happiness. We tried with Sebastian to reduce the smell of the hazelnuts like you did with the, the gelato, the statue of gelato. It wasn't easy to uh, capture the uh, sense of the uh, uh, gelato, uh, it's not easy. But translating the idea of on something wearable on skin and very pleasant, pleasing people, you know, with diffusion, with projection. Yes. Lots of going back and forth, lots of modifications. This one was 33 months. Yes. So, um, Which is not too much. It's actually not a lot. I, I thought it was a lot because yes. our team was like, you need to pick, but I think Olivia, Olivia said it, it took 600 submissions for our angel. All right, well, now she wanted some texture, you see? So it's, uh, it's fluffy, it's creamy, so the cream is creamy. And quite a lot of vanilla also. Vanilla is a big trend over the years, we will see. And every time I kept smelling the fragrance with the team, we're smelling it, and we're like, yeah, it just it smells so yummy. Like, <laughs> the only thing you can say to describe it. Layering and uh, it comes from the Middle East. It's uh, and uh, I respect the uh, Middle East for their know-how about about fragrances, about the ingredients. It's uh, amazing, and they, they do uh, you do uh, since uh, decades layering fragrances. Um, I will be a bit lost when you uh, 
let's say, try to layer like eight, ten, ten drinks. It becomes a bit like a soup. <laughs> After those wise words, we are going to the room number three and they were opening the room like a celebration. It was very cute. The third room was all about tasting the pistachio gelato that I have to say smell exactly like the fragrance. They've done an amazing job and I really, really enjoy it so far. And it's opulent as well. So if you may ask me, I had my little picture and word with a Mona Katan and I think she's so adorable. She's nice, she seems down to earth to me. So it was really a pleasure. Same for Olivier Crest, but Please try this fragrance, you won't be disappointed. Next event is Amouage and this is a proper masterclass. So that's the outfit. Very vintage dress, vintage shopping. Huh? And I've put under a little sporty skirt like this because I want it to be a little bit more fluffy. I'm a bit larger here, but thinner here. So I like to be like whoop like a bee and i've put a shirt under because i thought the dress by itself was a bit plain uh, match with some pearls a little earrings and because i'm a bit extra i've put some pearls here why not uh, and i'm gonna put some uh, trainers with some white socks very oversized black coat and i think a green bag so we are going to Harrods for this luxurious masterclass and the horse is Persole, aka darius No, please, stay. <laughs> so we're going to discover lineage, search, guidance and purpose. First part of the class, we're talking a bit about Amouage itself. He has completely fallen in love, I think, with Oman, and especially because he's quite an outdoorsy soul. He's fallen in love with the nature of Oman, and there is a lot of beautiful nature to explore, you know, there's the mountains, the coastline. Highlight of the masterclass is testing the actual ingredients, the notes, uh, which are super qualitative. It's insane. The drying process somehow preserves the, the lemoniness, the acidity, the citrus quality, but it also takes on a really interesting leathery, dry, woody quality. And that's kind of what Renault wanted to capture. Sort of guiding you through your search and taking you deeper and deeper into the tower, into the place where she lives. And so this is the most opulent of the perfumes, the most sensuous. Even though incense is there on the list of notes, it is also so much about other things. It's got a very, very heavily floral heart. It's got rose in there. It's got jasmine. Osmanthus, if you haven't ever smelled it, actually in a perfume, smells very much like apricot and apricot jam. It's got a very, very strong sense of the roots underneath. And you looked at this image and you thought, that's it, that's the perfume I want to make in a perfume that somehow conveys groundedness and rootedness and strength and almost a kind of minimalist quality. And the treat is to meet the perfumer Karine that worked on Lineage. The first point was to create a fragrance around the French incense. The sea, the sand, the sun, looking very salty, very dry, very, very near. You have to put something about the oriental part of the world. So uh, I think Mia can uh, connect it. Uh. Second material we've got for you to smell is the Sichuan pepper. If you smell, uh, you can taste the citrusy. Um, Do you get like a kind of lemon? I smell, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I smell it's aromatic, it's like basil. Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Mm. Very fresh, very sparkling. I use this one because for me, Symbolized uh, the reflection on the wave. Easier for me to symbolize uh, this is crazy. And I suppose it's sunny as well, isn't it? Yeah. Does ginger make you think gold and yellow as well? Or, yeah. yeah so, so that's <laughs> exactly. the sun. And maybe I, I like some uh, some raw materials. Uh, so I go very often patchouli, right. I nuts, very often spices. Mm. He shares many many things. Uh, 
for example, uh, during uh, the development, he asked me if uh, this color could be good. So mm -hmm. we chose together. It's very uh, something unusual in the perfume world. Yeah, because that really doesn't happen very often where the brand no. says to the perfumer, do you like the color of this bottle? Because <laughs> you, could, you could have said no. Yeah. 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 He, he probably would have listened, actually. Yes, because yeah. he asked me to choose uh, between the two colors. Yeah. It's very good because um, when we know that uh, it would be the color of the bottle, we change a little things. Right. Yes. So you adapted the formula. So yes. can you remember what you changed? I um, increased the mineral notes. Okay. Overall, a very cozy masterclass. Really enjoyed it and really enjoyed rediscover the fragrance. British family perfumer since 1730, supplying the royal family since 18. This is Floris, of course. For the relaunch of Mulberry Fig, now the fragrance is not limited edition anymore. A fantastic news! That's the outfit of the night. Khaki jacket with military button and a short little dress and boots. All shopped vintage, of course, except the bag, but yeah. Taking the tube and meeting my lover at the station. He was already there, took a picture and said, I'm there. And I was like, yes, I'm on your picture. <laughs> the celebration was at the Great Scotland Yard Hotel, it, which is beautiful, absolutely gorgeous. Look at that decoration. I'm in love. If I could have the same living room, I would be very happy. If you haven't tried this fig already, this is a beautiful powdery fig, very classy, lots of cardamom, it's gorgeous. The animation of the night is a collaboration with London Terrarium that taught us how to do a little terrarium. And it's so creative, I really enjoyed doing that. It was really funny and unusual. And if you ask me if my terrariums are still alive, they are still alive. Look, they are well and in good condition. I didn't kill the plant, which I'm, I'm very proud of because I'm just terrible with plants, that's it. <laughs> nice cocktail, fresh cocktail. Yes, look at this, this is nice. Um, we can't complain, the food was absolutely delicious. And uh, here's a little video of me to uh, teach you how to spray fragrance correctly to spray here to spray here always the pulse point and then let's do all of our shoulder once twice everybody was looking at me but i don't mind <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. there was also an afternoon tea inspired by the fragrance which was beautiful talk about the inspiration, the story behind it, I've actually introduced you all to Edward Bellingham, who's our perfumery, perfumery director here at Florence. Holbury Fig, it's really inspired from our location uh, where we are in, in St James's, um, St James's Square and then St James's Park behind both have uh, a, a bit of a fig theme going on, so there's a fig tree in St James's Square and in St James's Park, Park there is the, the biggest fig tree in the whole of Britain which sounds quite interesting, but also it's just a lovely, they're both really nice areas to just spend time and um, obviously being located where we are, we get to sort of see them throughout the different seasons and appreciate the, the beauty of them really and the different smells that, that, you, uh, that you find there. In the fragrance we sort of combine the, the cardamom and the fig, which they work so beautifully together and really wanted to create something that represented a bit of the warmth of the summer as well. Uh, so we have a, a kind of warm amber note throughout the fragrance. It's got a leafy uh, green area as well with the, the violet leaf. Um, I'd like to raise the, the glass to, to yourselves and to your lovely feet. Thank you so much. Thank Cheers. You. Cheers. Cheers. This event was in the evening, though, so there was a bit of a vibe like it's Friday night, you know, um, which was really nice. I do like that. Very classy as well. But as you can see, I had a little bit of a headache the day after. <laughs> And the last event is Electimus, and we are going to Jovoy, which is my favorite place to test and try niche fragrances. This event is for the launch of Gladiator Hood, that is a earthy yet beast hood. And we had some delights, of course, that are matching the fragrance, which were great. Like, for example, I love those little cocktails with uh, immortal flowers. The rest of the evening, we were very lucky to have an interview between uh, Claire Sokel Thompson, the creative director, and Stephen Matthews, a fragrance writer. Um, it's sort of unashamedly creating quite kind of decadent scents, timeless 
classic. It gives me an area to play in, ancient Rome. It's trying to capture a moment in time or a story. And where did the link between Electimus and Rome and the Romans come from? The Electimus is a portmanteau for to choose the best, so Electimus. So it's, a, it's a big collection of fragrances. So, Growing like the Roman Empire. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. uh, so moving on to Gladiator Oud, you've gone in a more, um, in a rich rather than a raw direction. You know, a brand which is ancient Rome, so um, I had to do a Gladiator. <laughs> what I wanted to do was create something that uh, had the, the sort of the, the, the power and strength of, um, of a gladiator, but rather than seeing them as a one dimensional character, much like kind of Russell Crowe, so a great deal of skill, courage, a real sense of sort of nobility and, and, um, and kind of fair play, and also the charisma required to kind of get something, the scale of the current. I mean, the heat, um, which was where I was interested in kind of tobacco and the, the, the sort of uh, hay and honey tones and then to capture the sort of physicality in the saltiness and cumin um, and, and for me this didn't actually start off being an oud necessarily it was about um, the oud kind of giving it the strength and power at the base but I really didn't want it to tip over <laughs> and it to be all about the oud yeah. so for me we were trying to kind of capture something that was really elegant sophisticated and wearable but with you know that makes you just feel bigger <laughs> yeah. so julian's skill is just uh you know overwhelming at times and that you know he he added the geranium and the cardamom to really kind of lift it rich but wearable i'm not the biggest oud fan um, I like it you to be. You told me that earlier. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like it to be an ingredient. I like it to be used and balanced. But in this, it is more forthright and prominent. But it's wonderfully wearable. Lucky me and Tom, aka the Saintiest, to have a private tour with Claire, which we felt, I think, very privileged. This is the editing clam that realized that I didn't do an outro. So I'm doing it now. I hope you enjoyed the events. Let me know which one was your favorite. And don't forget to subscribe. Leave a little like. I want to give a special thank you for my YouTuber and the people that super thanks. Thank you so much and see you soon. Stay well and take care of yourself. Bleu